what's good y'all it's bull ross back at again with another video man so we're back here once again with another thoughts my thoughts and opinions on wrestlemania night two night one ended off fantastic night two it hurt a little bit we're gonna talk about it we're gonna talk about it but i will say overall wrestlemania this year was a success in my opinion both nights definitely delivered when they needed to deliver so we're gonna get straight into it we got to talk about go i'm gonna go through the each each of the matches i'll give my opinions on it and uh, i'm gonna get y'all opinions on you know which night you feel is better what was your favorite match from tonight and everything that you know may be going forward so shout out to everyone that was a part of the stream tonight you guys were amazing as you can tell, I probably my voice is a little hoarse, a little sore, because man, that main event just took me over the edge. But we're we're we're, we're going to talk about the main event later on. Thank you to everyone that was part of the stream. Thank you to everyone that made Dub's birthday that much greater. You guys are amazing. All right, so they started off the show with Omos and Brock Lesnar. They started. They got it right out the way, and surprisingly. Even though when Omos came out there, no one really gave him a reaction. That's kind of telling. But of course, when Brock comes out there, he's going to always get a reaction. Surprisingly, this match was more entertaining than I expected it to be. I thought this was going to kind of be more or less <clears throat> not a, a glorified squash match in the sense of Omos losing. Because I had a feeling Omos was going to lose. But I, you know, I didn't think it was going to be as entertaining as it was. And I think the crowd really helped this match out even more. Um, the fact that when the match started and Omos was dominating Brock Lesnar, that rarely happens. He, it's it's a it's a rare sight to see Brock Lesnar struggle. The fact that Omos was throwing Brock like a sack of potatoes was just insane, and he was working on Brock's back, so Brock was having a tough time trying to hit him with the F five and suplexing him. Like Brock was having a tough time. Brock was doing some great work at selling. He was having a tough time, and it didn't look like it was going to be one-sided here. But, of course, suplex just started coming out, and then once Brock was able to hit the F5 on him, all it took was one F5, one, two, three. And that was it. And then Omos, you know, rolls out the ring afterwards. Doesn't really look like he was super affected by it. And it looked like, you know, he, Omos was like, I was that close. And it looked like they were maybe setting up something else for them. I hope not please no i don't want to see this no more but they may be doing that at some future event maybe backlash who who knows but omos didn't look like he was done he was i was this close so i don't i don't know honestly the match was better than i expected it to the crowd was pretty hot during this match so it was serviceable it was a cool i see why they started off the match uh the night with this match it was cool uh it's not something i want to see again so solid match now in my opinion easily the worst match of the night this match right here Liv Morgan Raquel Rodriguez versus Natalia and Shotzi versus Ronda Rousey Shane and Baszler versus Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville I didn't care about this match going into it I didn't care about the match when it was happening I didn't care about the match when it was over it was cool to see Raquel Rodriguez get, you know, get to show off her dominant side, like, you know, her strong suits, but I was like, I didn't care. And the fact that Ronda and Shayna were pretty much out the match, the entire match. They barely did anything. And then they ended up picking the win at the end. I don't know if they're going for the tag titles, the women's tag titles. That could be interesting. Ronda versus Ronda and Shayna versus Becky and Lita. They have history. Ronda has history with um, with Ronda. Uh, no, Ronda has said Ronda has history with Ronda. Ronda has history with Becky. So that could be interesting. I would be okay with that, but honestly, I just didn't care. It was a, uh, you know, it wasn't really clean in the ring. It was kind of, they were, you know, missing spots. It kind of looked sloppy. The crowd was dead. And this was not a great way to start off the show. You, back, you start off with Brock and Omos, which, you know, had a crowd a little bit lively. Then you get this match, and the crowd was completely dead. And it was like, uh, I don't know. WrestleMania uh, Night 2 is starting off a little shaky. But I knew for a fact, after these two matches, 
everything else was going to sort itself out. And that's exactly what happened. With the Intercontinental Intercontinental Championship ma match, Gunther versus Drew versus Sheamus. What do I have to say? What do I have to say about this match? This 10 out of 10 match. This was so damn good, bro. I can't even go into it because at the time, we was trying to set up the stream for Dub and Sir Dance a lot to, you know, be a part of the stream. So I was, you know, kind of working on that, but I was watching the match as it was happening. And Michael Cole's commentary was like everyone there. He was so excited. He was standing up, giving them a standing ovation because these guys were trying to steal the show and they damn near would have if it was on any other program. If it was on any other wrestling event, this match would have stole the show. Unfortunately, it wasn't. This, but it, it, it damn near could have. This triple threat was fantastic. I knew it was. I love this match. It was hard hitting. It was brutal. I love the spots where Sheamus and Drew were uh, giving Gunther the beats. And I like the fact that at the end, Gunther picked his spots. He picked his spots. And the right person won. I said this. Gunther doesn't need to be losing yet. You're trying to build him as one of the most credible intercontinental champions we have ever seen. And God, man, he's doing it. So, hey, me personally, go watch this match. Honestly, you can kind of skip the first two matches. If you miss WrestleMania Night 2 tonight, start it at the Intercontinental Championship, and I think you'll probably rank this as one of the best WrestleManias of all time. This was so good. Fantastic. Loved it. 10 out of 10. Go watch it. You will not be disappointed. It is, it's what we got at Clash at the Castle with Sheamus and, and Gunther, but you add Drew to the mix, and it's just perfect. Fantastic. Now we got the Raw Women's Championship, Bianca Belair versus Asuka. Now they had a very tough task because the SmackDown's Women's Championship match was great. It started off slow, and then it just went to new heights. So they had a tough task to follow that. And I think they did pretty well. I think they did a god man, they did a good job. The fact that Bianca Belair pretty much holding her own, showing her strength. I love that Bianca is was, you know, they they position her as showing her how strong she is. And Asuka, the smaller woman, may not be as strong. But she was trying, she's good at her submission techniques. She's good at the grappling. She's good at trying to get you to tap out. She's good at, with her speed. I love that dynamic. This match was good. I enjoyed it. Crowd was into it. And once again, they're following a match, the Intercontinental Championship match, which had the crowd up here. So for them to follow that match and still have the crowd there, that was, that was a telling sign. That was a very telling sign. At one point, I definitely did think that uh, Bianca was going to maybe tap out. But they once again, they showed her strength, bro. Her powering her up on her shoulder while trying to get out of a submission to hit her with the KOD finisher, bro. Beautiful. Showing her strength. Crowd was amazed. Her deadlifting her from the top rope all the way to the ring on the other side. Well, inside the ring. Oh my God, bro. Fantastic. She's, and she won. I thought she was going to lose here. I know some people were wanting Oscar to win it. I don't know what they're going to do here. I think Oscar winning would have been a good choice here, but they got to have something planned for her. Granted, I don't know who she faces now. So I don't know. I don't know, but the match was good. I think Oscar should have won, in my opinion, but they gave it to Bianca and they wanted her to be the champ still. So we will see how things play out going forward. Who will be her next opponent? Or maybe do they run it back at Backlash? And maybe she drops it thin at Backlash. I don't know. We will see. I'm thinking that could possibly be the case. They probably run it back with Asuka one more time. And they drop it at Backlash. <clears throat> All right. So, my fucking voice is gone. We had an impromptu match. Once again, the Miz stay getting into matches or whatnot. Uh, impromptu situations. Uh, he missed for some type of way with the whole Pat McAfee situation with Snoop Dogg. So, out of nowhere, fucking Shane McMahon comes out. Just randomly. 
And I don't know, he ends up getting hurt. Why they start a match, he ends up getting hurt. Trying to take on the Miz. I don't know what the hell happened there. And then, all of a sudden, Snoop Dogg gets, says, screw it, I'll insert myself into this. And he hits the Miz with a people's elbow. Pretty good, pretty good elbow drop too. <laughs> it was, it was, it was a fun moment. Not can't can't really take it too seriously. Just seeing Snoop out there, Uncle Snoop being Uncle Snoop, bro. People love Snoop Dogg wherever he's at, whatever he's doing. It was a cool moment, cool funny WrestleMania moment. Now this right here was fun for me. Edge versus the Demon Finn Balor. Their entrances alone, Edge's brood entrance alone. With the wing suit, fantastic, beautiful, beautiful. In the sense of just how it looked with the flames. I was just like, bro, this, this was, they killed it. And even Finn Balor's entrance with his makeup was fantastic. Entrances right there, great. The fact that we got the OG sail back, no red sail, no, nothing distracting. The OG hell in the sail, love that. And I like that it, this was personal. Edge still hasn't forgiven Finn Balor for what happened with Beth. This is very, very personal. And you can tell it was personal. They were already getting the weaponry out as soon as the match started. Now, there is a spot in this match that a lot of people are going to be talking about. Edge brings out a ladder. And he throws the ladder at, at um, Finn Balor. And then Finn Balor, you don't see the camera angle, but you see nothing but blood gush out. And I honestly think he got hit. Like, that was a legit, like, he got busted open hard way. This wasn't no play job because they don't do that in WWE. If you see blood in WWE, nine times out of ten, it's a legit, like, you know, a legit hard busted open situation. And that's what happened because they cut the camera. They stopped the match. They opened up the hell in a cell to get some officials in there to get this bleeding to stop as much as possible. Luckily, he had the paint on so you couldn't see it, but you could see it all over the ring canvas. So they purposely cut to Edge's face, but they never show Finn Balor. Any other time in a hell in a cell back in the day, you expected blood. So to see blood legitimately this time, not gonna lie to you, was a cool touch. But of course, we didn't really see it too much. As WWE got their investors, they're trying to keep happy. So, um, it was one of those things that was definitely not planned, but it added more to the match. And I like the fact that Edge is still in character. He's not giving a damn that he just busted him open. At this point, he's trying to find more weaponry to make sure he finishes him off. Now, this was another cool spot. So, Edge brings in the table. And he ends up getting being the one getting beaten down on the table. Brutal chair spot shots while Edge is laying on the table face up and getting hit with the chair shots. So you think Finn's going to go to the top to hit the coup de grace, the top rope? No. He jumps to the cage, gets higher, and then jumps off. But Edge rolls, so he jumps straight through the table, sent his legs straight to the gulags. His legs were done after that. And then this is when Edge proceeds to go to that dark place. Finn Balor's laying face down on the canvas. He gets the chair, puts his head on the chair. He gets out the ring. He gets him another chair. And what made this so cool, poetically, storyline-wise, this is how Beth Phoenix was in. This is the situation Beth Phoenix was in. When Edge couldn't do nothing, and he had to watch his wife get concertoed. That's the same look Edge had. You know, I didn't know exactly what he said. Um, and I'm sure some of you guys will comment down what he actually said at the time before he hit Finn Balor with the chair. But boy, it was a beautiful, poetic scene. And he cracked him with that concerto. One, two, three, and it was over. Now, I did see a lot of people saying... Well, damn, what about Finn? He just, he just lost. He's supposed to be the leader of the group, and he can't beat an Edge that's about to retire. I think they more so wanted to go with the story here. Honestly, it should have happened when they had their uh, their their mixed tag match, but it didn't end there. 
It was more so like, now nah, we still want the smoke type situation. So it should have ended there, but they wanted to bring it out, you know, bring a hell in the cell. And it's a personal feud. So I'm not mad that Edge won, but at the same time, I can understand that Finn could have used that win. The only person that won this weekend from Judgment Day is Rhea. And it'll be interesting to see what happens going forward. But either way, I enjoyed that Hell in a Cell. I enjoyed it. It was fun. It was great. Entertaining. Definitely go check it out. It's definitely worth the watch. And hopefully we will see where Edge will move on to. Who will he be facing? Because the reports are that he's supposed to retire this year. So we will see who will be next on the list for Edge to be feuding with. And we're going to get to the match of the night, in my opinion, bro. The Undisputed WWE Universal Championship. Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes. This was great. This, this was fantastic. This was great. I don't even... I don't even know what to say other than they 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 showed out in this match. Cody's entrance alone was fantastic. Him coming through through the ramp, got all the pyro. He got the wings on the back of his fit. Beautiful. Roman coming out to a group of people on the piano playing his theme song, and then him coming out, pyro. Cody meeting his wife greeting his wife greeting his daughter um uh greeting i believe it was uh um luke harper's son i believe that was his son he gave him the belt uh the belt that we he was wearing um you know they were close in aew and the fact that they mentioned that on commentary was also a beautiful thing so him doing that it just bro you would have thought the way they set this match up that this was it this, I, I I truly thought this was it. As the match went on, it, it just, you would have thought this was the end. I like the fact that Roman was doing Roman, Roman stuff, but Cody was really getting the upper hand on him. And Roman wasn't prepared. He had to take him a little bit more seriously. And I like that. I like the fact that he had to get some hype from Paul Heyman because Roman was very surprised. Solo was out there with them. And Solo, you know, there to enforce. He hit uh, Cody with the, the chair to hurt his ribs. Ref didn't see it. Then he ends up getting the, the, the strap, the little belt that he gave the kid, I guess, and hits him with it. Uh, obviously, the ref noticed something and kicked him out, you know, told him to get out of there. But the story they were building is roman is not new to this he's true to this he's been doing this he's main evented multiple wrestlemanias cody has never done this this is his first time he's in deep water roman felt comfortable cody was trying to fight the odds and the crowd was definitely pro cody here multiple cody chants the, this match was just so executed perfectly the way they were setting things up the story they were telling cody trying to fight Another great moment. Obviously, the Usos come out. Another great moment. They're jumping, Cody. And you knew Sammy and Kevin Owens was going to come out. Of course, they come out. They start attacking them, giving everybody the beats. Getting the Usos out of the ring. And I love this visual. And I thought, oh my God, they're going to do it. I've been saying this. I've been saying this for weeks. Having Cody... I mean, having Sammy and Kevin Owens, especially Sammy, be involved in the process of Cody winning will be that make that story that much better. Because everyone wants Sammy to get that revenge on Roman. So Roman's by himself. And it was such a good sight. Roman gets hit with a stunner. And then he's ended up in the corner. And it was so good to see Sammy hit him with the Haluva kick. For all the things he had to deal with. It was such a beautiful sight. Oh my God. And then the Usos get back into the ring. They start brawling, bro. And of course, there's always the referee spot. You know, the shenanigans or whatnot. Multiple close near falls. A pedigree was hit. Uh, rock bottom was hit. Crossroads was hit. 
and whatnot. So we're getting toward the ends of the match. I'm I'm an emotional wreck, bro. I'm 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 thinking this is it. They're about to do this. They're about to really end it. This is about to happen, right? <sighs> like I said, I was at a high and just oh my god, great match though. So now C- Cody's in control. He just got out of the guillotine choke. He fought through. He's fighting through. He starts smashing Roman, bro. Just smashing ground and pound, giving him the beats to get out of the um, the guillotine. And, bro, he, st- he hits him with one crossroads. But that's not enough. No, 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 no. No, no. Crowd's going crazy. I'm going crazy. He hits him with a second crossroads. I'm like, nah, 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 nah. That's not enough. You got to put Roman away. That's when Paul gets involved. Paul distracts the referee. The referee's trying to get Paul off the apron. Then Solo come back again with a hoodie on, hits Cody with the Samoan spike, which sets up Roman to hit Cody with the spear for the one, the two, and the three. And all the air out of the crowd just got sucked up into the atmosphere. It was just people couldn't believe it i couldn't believe it i was we were so in shock because i'm like holy shit they didn't pull the trigger i they didn't pull the trigger i couldn't believe it bro even now as i'm processing it as i'm thinking about it i still can't believe they did not pull the trigger and roman reigns is Deal. You're undisputed champ. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> I don't even. The WrestleMania, when he faced Daniel Bryan in Edge, he had to win that. The WrestleMania, where he faced Brock, he needed to win that. The WrestleMania. Where he faced Cody. I thought this was it. And he won it. Here's the thing. I'm not upset. Because once again. I obviously know. There's still more story to tell here. And they're going to continue to tell. The downfall. Of the bloodline. It's going. It's starting. It started last night. When the Usos lost. But Roman. Still. Is at the head of the table. So the only thing I can think of is they're going to continue that story. They're going to continue the downfall of the bloodline. They're going to continue the story of, okay, Roman won. Usos lost. Do you think Roman's going to be okay with that? No. Roman is going to definitely at some point chastise them. He's going to talk about that. He's going to get on Jay. He's going to get on Jimmy. And it may get to a point where he may start getting even more disrespectful because, like, I'm the guy that's holding the family up. Y'all don't have y'all championships. I do. Not realizing that the only reason why Roman has had his championship for so long is because of his family. And I think that's going to be a good story to tell. Roman's going to get big at it because this is the guy that everyone told that everyone really was like, yeah, it's Cody's time. And once again, family helped. And I can see Jay not liking it. I can see Jimmy not liking it. And then I can see Solo starting to realize what's going on here. And ultimately, when that all happens, and when his family turns his back on him, and he has no one to protect him, he has no one to help him outside of Paul Heyman. And even Paul, I can see Paul. I can potentially maybe see Paul starting to feel some type of way. Maybe he starts getting rude and disrespectful to Paul as well. Because he'll be the only one left. He'll be the only punching bag. Maybe Paul be the, the last straw. But either way, when all his family's gone, that's probably when he'll lose. Now the question becomes, who does he lose to? Because I don't think this story with Cody is over. It can't be. It can't end like that. There's no way. It, it, his story ends like that. Granted, I wish his story was completed at WrestleMania. 
But what happens? Does this story get completed in SummerSlam? Now, a lot of you guys were saying this is a match Roman should not be losing to anyone except WrestleMania. And I don't know if they can book another year of him winning. I don't know if they have the the capabilities to do that because Roman has beaten everybody. Yeah, you can call up some NXT talent, but they're not going to be ready. Some people are saying maybe Gunther, but Gunther is, well, he's a heel more or less. Now he does have help, but I don't think it's his time yet. He got to drop the IC title. So it's not his time yet. It's not, some people are saying maybe Seth and Roman at WrestleMania 40, but you you got to really wait all the way to WrestleMania 40. I know they're going to they want they want him to have the title over a thousand days. And he will. But at the same time, how can you book this? One, we need to get the titles off. <laughs> Monday Night Raw don't even have a champion, <laughs> to be honest with you. Roman shows up whenever he wants. And SmackDown more or less has a champion. So you still need to split the titles. How are you going to do that? I don't know. There's a lot of questions that got to get answered here. And I'm still of the camp. Roman should only lose at WrestleMania. If it's not WrestleMania, then it's a bust. That's just my opinion. Will him losing will still be great. It'll probably get a great crowd reaction if it was at SummerSlam or something like that. But I still think the biggest show of the year should be when Roman loses at WrestleMania. So, and then you also have to can take into take into consideration Money in the Bank. Will LA Knight? I know a lot of people love LA Knight. Will LA Knight be somebody that can win Money in the Bank this year? And would you actually go through with a cash-in? Because here's the thing. With this particular situation, it would have made sense if Cody won it because then someone cashing in on Cody would have been a heartbreaking moment or a star-making moment. Someone cashing in on Roman, they got to be the guy next. And maybe it's LA. But when I really think about how Roman Reigns' title should end his title reign it shouldn't end on a cash in I can tell you that now it should be a clean pin his, his title reign is too big to end off on a cash in so that's why I say I can't even buy into that whoever wins unless they pull a swerve they pull a big swerve and have Cody win the money in the bank to get his opportunity and then he cashes in legit like but I think a lot of fans would hate that. So I don't know. I don't know, man. This is this is a crazy one. I don't know what they do going forward. But I will say this. It's one of the best WrestleMania main event matches I've seen in quite, quite some time. I put this WrestleMania match as just intensity, crowd reaction. I put this up there. One of my favorites. The Daniel Bryan, yes movement, main event between Daniel Bryan Randy Orton and Batista. That was just lightning in a bottle. That atmosphere was hot. Just like this. That main event was great. This main event was fantastic. Lost my fucking voice. And I'm okay with that. So, I'm going to leave it up to you guys. Comment down below. Let me know. What's your favorite match of night two? Which night you guys prefer? Night one or two? And did you guys like the ending to this match? Are you guys okay with Roman Reigns still being the tribal chief and the undisputed champ? Or do you guys think WWE dropped the ball and they should have should have went with the hot hand and gave Cody the win here? Overall, in my opinion, this show, both shows, if I combine them together, 9 out of 10 WrestleMania. It was only really like three matches out of all the matches that didn't really hit. Every match outside of that was fucking fantastic. So, I think that's a good show. Nine, nine out of ten for WrestleMania this weekend. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys are showing on the channel. Road to 150K. I am still the undisputed YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Now, before I end the video, I don't know what we're going to do with the Intercourse Championship. I mean, I guess it could come back to me, but we didn't even get a chance to really do, like, finish it off. For night two so what i may end up doing is since it never got decided 
or whatnot, it'd be only fair possibly to vacate the title. So that way at Backlash, we can try to see who will be the champ again. Because, you know, just me being a fair competitor, I don't want to take the championship off of night one predictions because I would have won. Because, you know, I had a commanding lead. So I wanted to be fair. And plus, it was his birthday weekend. So he's kind of focused on other things. So I don't have a problem vacating the title, potentially, the Inter Clutch Championship. And then we started up again for a mania. I mean, uh, backlash. Um, uh, yeah, for backlash and to see what goes down there. And then we can crown a new champion once again. So I'll discuss that thing with him. And we'll go from there. But I appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next week.